Hi, so I'm Sarah Swan and I do videos to help people with their mental health. Today's video is about attachment theory. Now I have another video that I've created that's a lot longer and it goes a little bit more into depth of each attachment style. Um, and I also will have separate videos for each attachment style so it goes even more into depth because my goal is to, with my business and my videos, I want to go really into depth with things. Um, but we're starting off kind of shallow and then eventually we'll go deeper. So um, today's video is about the different types and what is attachment theory. Now I covered it in my other video. Um, but I'm going to say it again because this video is going to be a lot shorter. So attachment theory is basically how we relate to other people. And this happens in childhood. It starts in childhood. So imagine you have, um, so there's, there's four different attachment styles. There is secure attachment, there's insecure, there's avoidant, and there's fearful avoidant or um, disorganized avoidant, avoidant. So basically, imagine you have a child, so, and it starts in childhood. Imagine the mother leaves the room. Now, depending on how the child acts is their basic attachment style. Now, your attachment style can change throughout life. It can be very fluid. It can change with your circumstances and your events and your partners you meet. Um, and it also can sometimes stay the same. Most of the time your attachment style is created in childhood because like during the first two years and also during the first like seven to eight years of our life, our unconscious mind is basically creating our programs that kind of sort of run unconsciously um, because we're 95% unconscious, 5% conscious. So, um, but anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> I went to tend it there. So anyway, um, so, let's say the mother leaves the room. So in one scenario, when the mother comes back, the child is able to reunite with the mom. And so that's more of a secure attachment. Now, let's say the mother leaves the room and then the child starts clinging to the mother and doesn't want to let her go. And she's afraid she's going to leave her and reject her and leave her forever. Um, I imagine a child literally clinging into the, the mother's leg. This is anxious attachment. And then imagine the mother leaves the room and the, the child, when the mom comes back, wants nothing to do with the mother. Just sits there and kind of like just doesn't want to do anything. That is avoidant. And then you have the fourth scenario, which is the most crazy kind of scenario, um, is the mother leaves the room. She comes back. The child is disorganized attachment, which means sometimes the kid will cling and, some, and be anxious and worried about abandonment, or sometimes the child will want to avoid the mother, which is more avoidant. And so that's where you get the different attachment stuff. So very briefly, um, so yeah, so it's important because our daily relationships and um, who we meet in our relationship to ourself and how much self-esteem we have, how much confidence we have, and how well we can achieve in life. Um, like if you have a goal or a dream and you want to achieve it, um, if you have a more secure attachment, you have more confidence, more self-esteem, you're bound to be able to create and do that goal because you don't really care about what other people are saying. You're like, okay, this is exactly what I want to do. Like you will listen to other people take their advice if you want, but if it does not work for you, you won't. Um, it allows you to also have more abundance in your life. You know, not just money, but like relationships. You get closer to more people. And so this is why attachment is really important. I think it really does underline a lot of what we do in life. Um, so very briefly, secure attachment, basically these people that are secure, they're able to communicate very well with their partner. They're able to be in a relationship, but still kind of keep their own independence from each other. So they have a both uh, intra, it's like intra dependence because they're able to depend upon themselves, but also their partner. Also the relationship to get into the relationship is very easy. Now to stay in the relationship, obviously it does take work and they know that and they're willing to do that. Um, they're able to communicate their needs. Um, so they're able to um, say things and what they want using like I statements. Um, they also know if they've, they're triggered, whether it's like a trigger for them or whether it's something they need to talk about. They know the difference. 
Um, they also know what their needs are and they're able to communicate. Um, but, um, and they know their boundaries. So in the gist, that's what secure attachment is. Anxious attachment. So if you are anxious attachment, you tend to put yourself down and you put your partner on a pedestal. You can be sometimes very clingy or needy. Um, I know I have been there. Um, you, <laughs> you have trouble communicating your needs. You don't even know your needs. Um, again, I've been there. <laughs> like, or I would have a need and kind of repress it. Um, you, you oftentimes would, um, you, you make your happiness about your partner. You're very obsessive when you're thinking about your partner and the relationship, but you don't necessarily think about you. Like your relationship and your partner come first. And another thing is, sorry, I'm looking at notes. Um, a lot of times I think you, um, at least with me, it was hard to kind of have your own identity because again, you were so kind of almost codependent on the other person. So, and also you, you fear, um, you like connection so much that you fear space, you fear abandonment. And I know like with me often texting too much or going too much towards the other person and, and not allowing them space. So in the gist, that is what anxious attachment is. Um, and then dismissive avoidant. So a lot of times they're not in touch with their emotions and um, it can be hard for them to express their emotions. This is the idea that maybe when they're a child, they, let's say they didn't want to go to school and they're crying and their mom said, because she was worried about being late for, for work and, and she had to like make it on time and so on, the mom would be like, you're fine. When in reality, the child had emotions and had this feeling like, no, I'm not fine. But and then when this happens over and over again, eventually the child learns, oh, my emotions don't matter. Um, or maybe they had a, a mother that was too kind of clingy and too over them, um, too enmeshed essentially. And they lost, they fear kind of like this losing of their identity a little bit and they fear enmeshment. And so like they kind of avoid. Um, they also tend to feel like no one's going to help them no one's going to provide for their needs, that they're on their own. And I know, again, from my perspective, I've been there where I've been basically very independent and very like, I'm not going to depend upon another person because they're not going to be there to help me when I need their help. And so like learning how to depend upon another person is, it can be pretty difficult. Um, also to be vulnerable. Um, again, I've been there where this idea, like I had to be a perfectionist. I had to have straight A's and when I got a straight A, I needed a better grade because, hey, I needed to be better um, because I didn't want to show my vulnerability. I didn't want to show that I had any weakness. Um, so a lot of times, and they, they also, um, unlike uh, the anxious partner, the anxious person, which a lot of times anxious and avoidance kind of attract each other. So the anxious partner wants connection, right? Well, the avoidant doesn't want connection they want space a lot of times um, because when they get that connection, it feels unsafe to them. Just like the anxious partner, it feels unsafe for the space. So um, yeah, so that's avoidant. Um, avoidance sometimes are criticized as being kind of not the best. I've, I've heard of like being criticized um, and I don't think that's necessarily true. I, yes, they're very logical, so they do have a lot of strengths. They're very logical and they can be great thinkers. They can be great problem solvers and they can be really great listeners. I've seen so many people that are avoidant and they're like, they want to listen to the anxious partner. Um, it's just hard to get them to open up sometimes. So that's my experience though. Um, and then the last one is fearful avoidant. So, I only know how these all feel because um, I'm I was I'm coming from fearful avoidant, which means I have a little bit of both. I have both anxious and I have both avoidant, and so that's the gist of what um, fearful avoidant is. They kind of want connection, but they also don't want connection. They can be hot, they can be cold. They're known as this hot cold kind of thing, um, and it's very confusing to other people, especially if you have both going on at the same time. 
I know in my experience, I've had things where I literally would want connection with a friend and all of a sudden I get a thought in my head or I get triggered or something will happen or I'll feel hurt or I'll feel some kind of emotion that will literally make me pull away. And I don't even know, like originally I didn't even know I was doing this. And then I finally realized, oh, look, oh, I'm pushing them away. Um, but yeah, I would also want connection. So it's like, it would go back and forth. Um, so, and, and these people, um, they have the both, they have the worst of both worlds too, because they, they have the anxious thing where they want connection and then they have avoidant where they don't. And it's really hard for them. Um, it can be also like a lot of emotions can come up and just so much stuff that they have to uncover. And, um, I'm personally coming from that, but I'm also becoming more secure. And it does take time. I've been working on this for myself for three years. I've been doing so much research. Um, but yeah, so, and also like the anxious partner though, um, fearful avoidance are also very in tune with the other partners most of the time. They can also lean towards more dismissive and more anxious depending on where they are and also based on the partner. So for example, I've had people where they're more anxious, I become more avoidant. If they're more avoidant, I become more anxious. So it also depends upon that as well. So um, this is what attachment stuff is in a like little snippet. I have a longer video that I'm putting out that is 20 minutes long that goes way more into depth. And then I also will have some videos that will be each attachment. And so this is what attachment is and why it's important. And um, this is really important for me because my channel is about relationships. It's the relationship to others and relationship to self. And um, using the creative arts, eventually I want to figure out how to do that. I'm still trying to figure that out, so bear with me. Um, and anyway, um, let me know if there's any content that you would like. And if you like this video, please subscribe and like the video and tell your friends. Um, share it out. So thank you very much and um, yeah, thank you.